how many of you have seen a CT scan? How many of you can interpret one? Even the world's best radiologists may have slightly different interpretation for the same patient on the same scan. Why? Because there's more than what meets the eye. We have developed a medical imaging algorithm which looks at the tumor within the CT, extracts features more than the human eye can perceive. Way back in 2004, when we were developing the medical algorithm, we came across a military application where a filter was used to identify tanks in a camouflage background. We wondered whether we could translate this filter into medical images. We realized that the same filter could extract features within the tumor on CT which the naked eye of the radiologist could not perceive. Look at the irony here. Filter in a military application is supposedly taking lives. The same filter in a medical application here is looking to save lives. There are a number of steps that go in this process. The first step, obviously, there's an expert radiologist who draws a region around the tumor here, lung cancer on CT, after which we extract features, the texture map as depicted in this blue and pink bits, from where we get a histogram, a spectrum, as shown in green, and finally, a score based on mathematical equations, which tells you how complex, how severe your cancer is. This is TexRad texture analysis of radiological images. Cancer is a huge problem. 23 million new cases by 2030. And the chances are that we all will know someone who will be part of this ever-growing statistic. Every scan today comes with hundreds of images, tremendously increasing the workload of the radiologist. No two radiologists are the same. They differ in their perception, experience, education. And this has a major impact in having a slightly different interpretation for the same patient on the same scan. Every cancer diagnosis today is associated with a scan. And this is where our work comes in. Radiogenomics is an emerging, exciting new field which combines radiology and genetics to assess the complexity of the tumor, minimizing the need for frequent biopsy. Let me explain how this is done. There's two lung cancer patients on CT. The tumor appears similar in size and disease stage. However, the texture score is totally different. The top patient is the one with the green histogram. And this patient has a particular abnormal characteristic linked to a specific gene mutation. Whereas the bottom patient is the pink histogram, and this patient does not have any abnormality or this abnormal characteristic. And this is hugely important. Radiogenomics can tell you which patient has this abnormal characteristic and which patient does not. And if this information can come out, minimizing the need for biopsies or genetic testing, you're reducing the cost, complexity, and additional procedures associated with it. Once you have this information, what do you do with it? This is a survival plot which the TexRad intelligence differentiates. The green curve are all the patients which the software has identified to have poor survival. These are the patients who you will treat with novel therapeutics, like immunotherapy or targeted therapy. Whereas the patients on the top curve, the blue curve, as identified by TexRad, are patients who supposedly will have good survival. And these could be treated with conventional therapy. So TexRad can assist the radiologists, the treating physicians, to identify individual personal risk as no one treatment fits all and optimize the care 
for these patients. This is part of precision of personalized medicine as a novel imaging biomarker. In addition to identifying the cancer on the CT scan or the MRI, TexRad assesses the severity, the complexity, minimizing the need for frequent biopsies or complexity, and more importantly, reducing the cost. TextRad can provide the physician, the treating clinician, the oncologist, the tools which they can use to treat the patient according to their risk, provide optimal care. How did this all start about? It came about from my PhD research since 2004, working with a very eminent radiologist, Professor Ken Miles, and the engineers back in the UK at the University of Sussex. The initial proof of concept led to the development of a research prototype and eventually an international patent which demonstrates the novelty of the technique. In 2011, TexRad Limited was spun out from the university, which today is a public listed company based in the UK, listed on the London Stock Exchange, called Feedback PLC. Where are we today? Hundreds of publications have come out demonstrating the value of TextRad in a number of cancer applications. The software has undergone rigorous quality control and regulatory approvals, all which is necessary for a medical product. It's currently being employed by around 70 plus institutions around the globe, namely in the US, UK, Asia, Europe, and Australia. What next? As a senior imaging scientist at the University College London, I work with the team back in Cambridge to further develop the TextRad technology, identify new applications, and most importantly, to see how the TextRad intelligence can fit in with other healthcare omics. All of this is part of big data, machine learning, and AI analytics. I wish to share a very emotive experience recently mentioned to me by a radiologist, a consultant who is a collaborator, a, cu a customer of TexRad based in Hong Kong. This radiologist saw a lung cancer patient on CT who happened to be his relative based in Australia, which included the TexRad score. This really amazed him. This particular patient was part of a lung cancer clinical trial to evaluate how TexRad could translate from research to clinic. This really gets me out of bed every single morning, seeing 15 years of research translate into clinic and potentially assist the healthcare providers, but most importantly, the patient. A scenario where a radiologist today sits in front of a scan with the patient beside him, and wonders, is there more than that meets the eye? Can I alter the course of therapy for this patient based on the risk for the best outcome for this patient? And the answer to this very important question, I hope you all will agree, is yes. Thank you.